Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I remember one time we came for Kesha a long time ago. And I think I fell in the water. You see, this place, this is Imam, and had a lot of flooding. I don't know what I was doing, but I, as I was walking to the Kesha, I walked into the water, but I did not stop coming to the Kesha. I still came to the Kesha. Now, when you see this building, let it stand as a monument of what God can do. Uh, uh, trace the history of this church, and uh, you will be encouraged to see what God can do from small beginnings. Those were the days when we were falling in, the, in, in, in uh, dirty water. But now, we walk on paved ground. Amen? I'm so happy to be able to come at the beginning of the year and to share Kuchangia, this uh, theme of the year, the year of restoration with demonstration. For indeed, there cannot be a restoration without going, showing himself off as the great God who can do what man cannot do. The Greeks, uh, because the New Testament is written in Greek, uh, had way, two ways of marking time. The regular time we, we have, like today, tomorrow, they called it chronos, chronological, where you have January, February. But there's something they said, they used had another word for time, kairos. Kairos is a certain special time when certain things are happening. And what is happening this year, the leadership of the church has seen a Kairos moment, a year of restoration. So, I would encourage you to run with the prophetic word because this is a Kairos moment that God has said, it's not that he was not blessing last year. It's not that he was not restoring last year. It is that this year is a special Kairos time, a time when if you can catch into the train of God, if you can catch into the current of God, if you can catch into the wave of God, then you experience an unusual blessing. Amen? Let us find our text in um, Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. You might have noticed that my voice has changed a bit. Do not worry, I caught a little flu. Uh, so it has changed my, my accent. So I don't know whether I'm speaking with an American accent or an African accent or something in the middle. Uh, so excuse me if you find that uh, certain sounds are coming differently from the way you know me. But God has given me strength. I, 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 I was wondering how shall I be able to minister. But uh, I feel good. And I'm able to bring the word of God to you that he's given me. Uh, the text that we read, we read two verses, verse 18 and 19 of uh, Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord, I'm reading from the NIV. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I, I, I will read from the NIV. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh, the Lord sent me quickly after Christmas to remind you that there is still one box of gift under your Christmas tree, which is yet to be opened. The package is named Emmanuel. God with us. But many people think they know. And so they say, ah, uh -uh, this is a box. I've seen it all the time. I'm not even going to open it. I was speaking in our church for Christmas. And uh, there is a, a, a way of saying in the U.S. where they say, remember the reason for the season. What they're actually saying, don't think this is just a holiday. 
But this is about the coming of Jesus. But even those who go to look at the reason for the season, they only go so far. Because they say, oh yes, Christmas is celebration of the birth of Christ. It's the birthday. Marking the historical event of the coming of a man named Jesus of Nazareth. And others say, oh yes, we know more than just the history. We know that he is the one who started the Christian religion. So they see it. Uh, they, they, so they know the mission of Jesus. Some know the history of Jesus. Others know the mission of Jesus. But there is one level of knowing the reason for the season and the reason for his coming by knowing, by uh, 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 taking the gift and unwrapping it and using the blessings that are in that gift. That's the real knowing of the reason for the season. Knowing about Jesus as the savior of the world is not going to help me. It's not going to help you. But it is coming and meeting him as the great redeemer. It is by coming and meeting him as the great physician. It is by coming and meeting him as the great mediator between me and God. That really makes a difference. Uh, we can celebrate in Christmas forever. But unless we come to that moment, we have not known the reason for the season. And that's why I said, God has sent me to tell you the box is still open. Because in this box, there is a road map and the resources for your restoration. This is a package. Because if you look at the text that we read, I call it the big five agenda of Jesus. You will notice that it is all about restoration. And Jesus said, this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. It is the meaning of my coming. And therefore, as we start the year, if we will understand the mission of Jesus and get connected with it, then we will indeed achieve the special blessing that God has for us this year. I say the, the package that has been left by many and opened is labeled Emmanuel, God with us. At one time when the children of Israel came to a critical point in their travel, in their journey towards Canaan, they reached a point and they realized this is huge, this is big. Mwanadam Huawezi cannot take us where we are going. Moses went to God and said, unless your presence goes with us, we are not going to move from here. Unless you become Emmanuel, God with us, in this travel, we know we will not make it. We sent the spies and they brought a report. And it was a true report. So we know for sure we are not science deniers. You know, even if we are Christians, we must understand that there is true science. If some science says something, don't be a science denier. So they couldn't deny. They only said, yes, they are giant, but God is greater. Amen? Yes, the lab report has said they have seen this, but God is greater. So we are not science deniers. We know that science can only go so far to reveal, but God is still far greater than what we know to be true. So these people came to a point where they realized the journey they are going to make to repossess, to restore. Because remember God had said from the time of Abraham, I have given this land to you and to your generations. So actually they were being restored to their land. It was a process of restoration. And they reached the journey of restoration at a point. And they realized this is going to take more than men. It's going to take God. And I pray that you will reach that critical point now. As you look at this year of restoration. And say, I will not go unless your presence goes with me. And I will open the package. Emmanuel, be with me in this journey. Because I know the forces that are against me. Great forces of corruption. Great forces 
of waste. They are against us. But God, unless you help us, we cannot be able to overcome. Unless you go with us, we will not be able. It is, we can have good programs. We can have good plans. And there are people who will run from one place to the other, seeking to connect with God. But I want to say it is the presence of God in your life that will make the difference. As the bishop said, he will not go through a human being to ask whether he should come and bless you. So all these things we do, they are good and they help us to focus. But let's remember, unless the presence of God is with us, they will just be empty slogans. They will just be gimmicks. They will just be religious rituals. Unless God is with us, they will be empty. There will be no demonstration. But when God is there, we will see a demonstration of the power of God. Remember the story of David. As David confronted an insurmountable problem, a giant, a giant who looked at him and said, are you people kidding? Why you send me a dog? The giant was so strong, he thought these people were kidding. But as he swung his sling, and one stone left the sling, it hit the giant right in the forehead. I want to ask you, because I told you not to be science deniers, do you think that little stone is the one that killed the giant? No, it's not the small stone. It is the power that was behind the little stone. God could have told David to go and slap the giant, and the giant would have died. It is the power that is energizing whatever it is that God has blessed. So do not look at yourself where you are. Again, to have the bishop. Don't look at the number of degrees you have. Because God can open a way where no man can open. It is not that he doesn't want us to be skilled. Remember, God likes skills and recognizes skill. You know why Paul wrote more than half of the New Testament? More than Peter? It's not that God liked Paul more than Peter. Because Peter, Paul was more educated. So God uses even what you have. But he can also use what you do not have. He can open a way, and the little you have, he can multiply it. I'm saying that because as we look to God to restore us, we might be captured by an inferiority complex, thinking, oh, I am this, I am that. But look to the God who is able to take a small stone and destroy a giant which had frightened the armies of Israel. They were running scared. But a little boy came by this little stone empowered by God and he was able to destroy the problem that had uh, uh, pro pro uh, uh, troubled them for a long time. I want to give you another example. The example of Samson. He's confronted by the army of the Philistines. And he looks around. He looks around, he cannot find a spear. He looks around, he cannot find any tool of war. And he catches whatever he could. A bone of a donkey. And with this bone, he's able to destroy a thousand men of the enemy's camp. So I'm saying, it is that, that connection, God with us. That gift that came on Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. That's what makes the difference. That's what makes the difference. If God be with me, who can be against me? God surprised me many times last year. As I, I faced some major issues I needed to do. I would try to figure out how do I solve this? And God would just point to a very simple answer. A very simple answer. That I would wonder, I thought this wouldn't work. 
And that's how God will cause a great restoration to you and to me when we are connected with him. When God is present, he can cause a restoration. To restore. When we say you want to be restored, it means it is something that was taken from you. Maybe a pickpocket pulled your hand back and the people chased him and they got him and it was restored back to you. But restore has even a greater meaning. And I think this is very important to you and to me. That there are things you were entitled to and they never even reached you. For example, your grandfather had land. But before you were even born, it was taken away. It is something actually taken from you, although it wasn't literally taken from you. And that God wants to restore. God wants to restore what was stolen even before you were born. When we talk of generational curses, many people think these are demons or something. But these are things that were stolen from us way before we were born. Our poor parents were involved in a lot of things. And some of these have passed on to us. And only God can cut them. Only God can discontinue these issues which have clipped and continue to follow us. These are things that were taken from us. It's just like your handbag is taken from you. Your health is taken because there before in your forebears there were issues. So God is able to restore not only what you know, but even things that were done contrary to what the best interests of yourself. He is able to restore. When you look at the, the great five, the agenda, the big five agenda of Jesus. You see, four of the first items is about restoring you. And then the fifth item is to restore what is yours that has been taken away. So you can see how important it is that God would want to restore you. And I will tell you the reason why God would like to restore you first before he can restore what has been lost. If you look at the text that we read in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 to 19. The Bible says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The gospel, the good news of salvation. So he wants to start at the very beginning, at the right place. Many people are running up and down, looking for a prophet, looking for a man to help them reach the blessings of God. But Jesus is saying, I have come to bring the gospel of salvation to the poor. The gospel of reconciliation where God wants to restore us to himself. Because Jesus said in summation of his agenda, I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. I have come to restore. And the first thing he wants to restore is your relationship with God. For he said, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So he wants to bless you. He wants to restore you as a person so that you can get the greatest gift that a man can have. As Peter was discussing with Jesus, he asked this question. Now that we have left everything, what shall we gain? And Jesus told him, you will gain a hundredfold in this world and in eternal life in the world to come. There is no loss in God. Amen? There is no loss in God. I have come to report to you after many years of reading and observation that there is no loss in God. There is no loss in God. 
God will restore. God will move you forward. God will never move you backward. You might not be like Brother Ochie. You might not reach there. He might give you one car. He might give you three cars. But God will move you from wherever you are. By the time Brother Ochieng has maybe an addition of vehicle, you might have a bicycle. But he'll be moving you from walking on foot to the bicycle. So God, there is no loss in God. Because God is a God of blessing. He's a God of restoration. He wants to restore you before he can restore to you what has been taken away. Look at the second item in his agenda. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And I want to tell you, many, many people are brokenhearted. We have heard of suicides among the young and even among the old. People who think there is no hope in life. They have been brokenhearted. They have been let down. They have gone to school and have finished their degree and there is no work. They are brokenhearted. But Jesus is coming to us today to restore hope, to repair the brokenhearted. He has come to proclaim liberty to the captives. He wants to restore you and me before he can restore what belongs to us and what should come to us. And I will explain to you why he wants to do that first. If there is something in your life that you are unable to stop yourself from doing, you are still a captive. For God said, I give you dominion. That's why I'm saying, let us go back and open that Christmas gift which has remained unopened. Because therein is the roadmap. Therein are the resources that will lead us to being restored. Let us go and open that box and look at it again. Why would God want to restore you first before he restores what he wants to bring to you? The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 23, verse 29, and I ask uh, the media to put it in NIV so that we can read that verse. It's a very interesting verse, and I always uh, remember it when I'm thinking of how God works with his people. Exodus chapter 23, verse 29. As we wait to have it on the screen, I explain to you what it says. As the children of Israel were, okay, let's read it. But I will not drive them out in a single year because the land would become desolate and wild animals too numerous for you. If you read the context, God is saying, yes, I have promised you the land and I can give it to you. But I give to you, it is too big for you to handle. You have no capacity. You don't have muscle. It is you, but I can't give it to you. God wants to restore you, but unless you yourself are restored, he will give you what he will give you and it will destroy you. How many people have you seen who are good believers, who were good pastors, but when money increased, they were blown off by the money? They had been praying, Lord bless my ministry, Lord bless my family. And God did. But they were not able to handle. As soon as the man got, oh, oh, he thought, oh, it's time to, to marry a new wife. Because he was not ready to handle the blessings. That's why God is out of the five, the great five items of his agenda, he is spending four preparing you for number five. He says it's so important that I must prepare you your capacity. Because if I give you the land, the, the weeds and the animals will overrun you. The enemy will overrun you. But if you are ready, if the inner man is stronger than the outer man, you will be able to, to withstand the temptations of this world. But what happens if the blessing come and the inner man is not growing, is growing thinner and thinner, he is finally swallowed by the outer man. And you wonder, 
Is that the same brother we used to go to, to, to Kesha with? Is that the same sister we used to fast together with? It is not that they were hypocrites. No. It is that their inner man grew smaller and smaller as their outer man grew bigger and bigger. And that's why God is saying, I want to prepare you first. I want you to be connected with me. To restore you. For what will it benefit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? It is a disappointment that those who have been in the faith for a long time have seen very nice, fine people. God blesses them and it just blows them away. They are not ready. And that's why God wants to, you to be prepared, to be strengthened, so that you are able to handle the blessings. It is not that he, wants, he doesn't want to, want to bless you. He is telling them, yes, I want to give you the land, but if I give it to you, because you are not many enough, you have not built capacity, the animals will overrun the land. What use is it? But I want to chase these occupants by and by. So as you continue to grow, you are able to take in more. And that's what God did. He continued to, to push the enemy. He continued to push the enemy. So that you are able to take in more as you continue to be strong. And I want to tell you, some of you are still where you are because you haven't built capacity. Let's be blunt. Let's be blunt. God is saying, I want to give you responsibility, but you're not ready. Let's be blunt. I might not be like John the Baptist, but I want to be blunt. Some are where they are, they are, you can pray all night long, but unless you have built capacity, unless you are able to handle, God will be reluctant. God will be reluctant because he doesn't want to destroy you. He loves you so much because it is like a father. You buy a teenager a car, which is very common where we are, and that might be the, you have given your child the tool to destroy itself with. It's not something you don't do, but you know the risks are high. Why would God want to restore you before he restores what has been taken away? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4 verse 1, as long as you are immature, as long as you have not built maturity, whatever belongs to you will be kept for you by the guardians and the trustees. You will not be able to enjoy it. So by seeking to deepen my faith and to know about God, I'm actually preparing myself so that the blessing God has for me, he will release them to me. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, he does not give at all from a slave. He will remain without the blessings. He will be a beggar. Though he is the master of all, but he can enjoy the blessings because he's still a child. You give a child a knife, it's going to cut itself. So, what do you do? You keep the knife away. You keep the tools away. You keep the blessings away. So what is it telling us? It's telling us if you really want to take responsibility, you have to mature so that you have the capacity. It's not that God is uh, putting a standard, uh, of using. He's not trying to put a hurdle on you so that uh, you don't reach, you know. He's just saying you're not ready. And as it's for me to now seek. Time will not allow us to discuss all the things you need to do, but some of them you already know. You know your life and where you are in God. If you know there are things that are between you and God, you need to resolve them. Because as you get ready, then he's ready. In verse 10, where he's restoring what has been taken from you, he says, when these four have been done, when you have been reconnected 
with God into his covenant through Jesus Christ. Because that's what the good the gospel is about. All blessings of the covenant are yours. This verse is rendered in different ways by different translations. It says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To, to, to proclaim the acceptable of God's favor. But I found one translation which gives you the real meaning in plain English. The Living Bible, which is a, a paraphrase, tells you what it really means, verse 10. That God is ready to give you, to give blessings to all those who come to him. It means when you come into the covenant of God, you are joined with God through Jesus Christ, all blessings are flow from the covenant. It is when we are joined with God that we enter into the covenant of God and all blessings flow from the covenant. The book of Galatians tells us that it is through Jesus Christ that we are able to tap into the blessings of Abraham. We become part of the covenant of God as promised to Abraham through Jesus Christ. And as we join with him, God declares that he wants to establish a new dispensation in your life and in your family. You see, legacy is where you leave something behind out of whatever you did that is of help to other people. But heritage is where God enables you to build a foundation of intergenerational blessings for your generation, your, your, for your descendants. And that's where God wants to put you. He wants to bless you and establish you, give you a heritage so that your children and your children, you have established a dynasty in need. Not in the bad way it is used in this country. You, God establishes you as a dynasty by giving you a heritage wherein your children and your, your children's children will, will eat from this base. Recently, I have attended to Mashakaya for younger people in the, in the city where I live. And as we were looking, because when you go to speak in a Mashakaya, you, you try to ask, where did he come from? Or what, what, what did his father do? Uh, how was he brought up? So you can have some material to, to prepare yourself. So as we, I was looking at the, the history of these two young people, I noticed that they actually came from a very Christian heritage. Because I would be told his grandmother was actually a pastor. And his father served in the church. And although this person is still struggling with his faith, I could still see in him. Because he's, he, they were like Cornelius. They are still kind of looking to God, but they haven't connected. But God says, I can see your prayers and your giving. And they always come forward to be a blessing to the church and to the people of God. There are many Cornelius. And God wants to send them so that they may know the way of the Lord. But what I'm saying is many of us have actually benefited from our parents, the heritage that they created through God. And that's what God wants to do with you and for me. To restore you is to establish you so that you are able to be cut off from generational curses and you extend a new dispensation of generational blessings. That is greater than you just being blessed yourself. And that way, we bring great glory to God and a great demonstration of the goodness of God. When we see it was not in vain that this man's past, uh, uh, father, grandfather was a pastor somewhere in a remote village it is not in vain. Now he's in America, prospered to a great extent. But you trace it back to these old men back in the village. There was a foundation, a heritage actually granted to these young men who is still struggling to find God, and yet he still benefits from that heritage. And that's what it is, that God is declaring a new future for those who get connected to his covenant to proclaim the acceptable year. A new dispensation, a new era where God will bless you.
How then do we receive the restoration? After we connect with God, let us position ourselves. Following the words of Jesus, where he said in Matthew 7, 7, ask. It will be given you. You see, in the Bible you read in chapter 15 of Luke, there were two young men. One of them was rebellious. He asked for his inheritance. He ran away and wasted it. But there was another good man who remained in the house, but he remained poor. Because he did not follow what Jesus said in Matthew 7. So you might have connected in the covenant of God, but somehow you have not, your mindset has not been changed. You are not able to see the blessings of God. And that's why Paul praying to the Ephesians says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding might be opened that you may see the riches and the heritage we have in Christ. So sometimes it's just that we can't see. And one man realizing the importance of seeing a man named Zacchaeus who was handicapped by his stature. And realizing he needed to see, he looked around and I will surprise you. The tools you need are just around you. He looked around. This was a rich man. He could have hired a chariot to climb on to see Jesus. But that time there was no chariot. So he looked around and God used the very natural thing that was around him, a tree, to help him to see and to be seen. For indeed we see he's, he wants to see Jesus. But he's not just seeing. He had heard about him and wanted to learn about this God. And as he climbed on the tree, lo and behold, it's not only that he was able to see Jesus, but Jesus was able to see. We call it positioning. You position yourself to be seen and to see. That's how you get restored because God is sending his angels. He's sending divine connectors. If you're hiding in your house, how are they going to find you? If you want to know, I was telling someone, if you want someone who is having challenges in faith, they start becoming rare. He stopped calling more. He was a friend. He stopped calling us as many times. You find him is missing a number of meetings. Then you know your friend is having problems. If a person does not want to be seen and to see, then this person will miss his blessings because as the God is sending his angels and his connectors, they will not find him. God has lined up your blessings. When Paul fell down in, on the road to Damascus, God had already lined up the man who was going to sort out his problem. He said, go into the city and you will find a man. God has lined your blessings of restoration this year. As you continue to follow him, he will tell you, put your nets on the other side. Ours is to listen. Ours is to have our eyes opened by God. Because the blessings of God are not very far away from us, but they are just around us. A solution which you might not, be, as I told you, I had some major issues I wanted to deal with. And sometimes I would, do it, I would just see a black wall. And then somehow a thought drops in my mind and I try it and it becomes a solution. God will tell you, there is a man. Go into the city and you'll find a man. We serve a great God. We serve a great God. A God of restoration. A God who wants to bless us. A God who wants us to move us from where we are to where we need to be. Because that's restoration. Maybe you are where you are. Not, you are. Maybe you did not go to school, not because you are not smart. Because, but because of this generation, no, your parents could not afford. So you were denied an opportunity. It was taken away from you, not because of your fault. But God still wants to restore you. And say, even though you did not reach your potential, you will. My brother was very gifted. 
But because of things that happened in the family, he never went very far from school. But this was the man who was in charge of the materials that built the Kenyatta International Center and the Kencom building, which were the largest building at that time in Nairobi. So, God is able to take you from where you are in spite of the many things that happen and restore you. Because we say being restored is God giving you back what was taken from you or what you were entitled to and it was even taken away before you were born. This is the year of the restoration with demonstration. And I look forward to see the great things that God is going to do. Are you excited at the prophetic word that this is a Kairos moment that God has given us? This is not like any other year. Because when God speaks, it's not that he was not blessing, but he's saying this. Those who will connect, it will be a surprising year. Because his God is always wanting to show himself off. This is the year he wants to show himself off. So that those who look down on the people of faith, so that those who look down on us because we are Christians, will see that God is able to overcome all the barriers that have been put up in front of us. God wants to show himself off this year. And you show himself off by doing something which no man can do. And even those who are not believers who acknowledge that God has done it. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word which has encouraged us this afternoon. We receive it with thanksgiving knowing that blessings are around us. Open our eyes to see the connectors you are sending, the blessings you have for us that we may be able to go and receive. Help us to prepare. Help us to check ourselves with you so that we can be ready to receive the many blessings you have for us. As Jesus said, the beginning is to connect with God. Like this young man who had gone away, when he looked at everything, he said, I have tried everything. And he said, I will arise and go to my father. Amen. <laughs>